everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're on episode 15 of Trigun, and yeah, I just, I couldn't wait. <laughs> you would think after watching episodes 13 and 14 together, I'd want to take a break, but no. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm really, really excited uh, to see what happens now in Trigun. I think Legato has, like, invigorated me post the midway point. I'm like, I want to know more about him, I want to know more about everything else, but I feel like that's not going to happen anytime soon, right? We're going to have to go on a little bit more soul-searching with Vash and Meryl and Millie before we get back to Legato. I just have a feeling. And last two episodes seemed like they were a lot of soul searching for Meryl's character. So maybe we'll get Millie in there too. Maybe we'll get more with Vash. But I have a feeling that I'm hoping Wolfwood comes back at some point and I'm sure Legato will come back as well. We just have to hold out and wait for it, right? But uh, the only comment I have really to talk about, we've been talking in the Discord about the series and everything and just about the soundtrack. Uh, Lyndon was noting from Patreon just how good Legato's theme is. I'm like, yeah, it's just distorted and crunkly and weird and creepy and it's, it's, it's very fitting, right? But not only that, um, Lemony Nitsu pointed out, we were talking about like, you know, I like shipping Wolfwood and Vash. I like shipping Wolfwood and Millie. I like shipping Vash and Meryl. I could even ship Vash and Millie. And it's sort of like this little polycule. And, and I love that Lemony Nitsu was like, it's a polygon, if you will. <laughs> I was like, I love it. I love it. It's so punny. I am all for it. So yes, a polygon indeed. But yeah, I just, I really liked since episode, I've liked Trigun all the way through. Don't get me wrong. It's been a lot of fun. But episode 12 was like a turning point. And I was like, ooh, now this is definitely my kind of show. Like getting those kind of twists and turns, those creepy moment with characters. I'm like, oh no, this is... <laughs> Th this I can do. So yes, I'm really excited. I hope you all are too. But we're not gonna waste any more time, y'all. I, I want to jump right into the series and see what we get. Uh, I'm just, mm. I can't wait, right? At this point, we are, we're at episode 15. It's a 26 episode series. So we're nearing like the 10 episode. We still have so much Trigun left. A lot. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. I'm excited because we'll have Trigun and the movie and then Stampede. So we have a, a whole rest of 2023 with Trigun Tuesdays. So I'm really excited. But yeah, I hope you all are too. I hope my dogs are behaving. I tell them to go lay down and they're like, so you mean play more, right? <laughs> but we're not going to waste any more time, y'all. We are going to dive right in and just see what we get. So... I've got my headphones in. I'm going to crank up the sound a wee bit because you know it's going to start out with that wonderful OP. The day that it doesn't start out with the OP and it just starts out with the episode, I will be like, wait a minute, what are we doing? It'll be crazy, right? But yeah, we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to dive into Trigun and just see what we get. So we're going to start episode 15 of Trigun. We're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's jam. And you shall receive. I was like, I was so ready for Legato to come back. And then he does. And it's amazing. Oh my gosh. What this just episode. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ever since episode 12, I, episodes 13 and 14, they were like, we're going to give you a recap and a nice cutesy little episode with Meryl and Millie and Vash. Aren't these happy fun times? Well, that's great because now they're gone and all that's left is darkness and saxophone music. I hope you're ready. I I love a sweet sound in sax. Like it's the sexiest instrument available. So if you, if, if any villain was gonna have a musical instrument, it would be a saxophone. Like the most sensual, sexy instrument. Like I just need Careless Whisper to be edited in. Anytime Legato comes on the scene, like ding, like I just need careless whisper. I just need it playing. I could do an edit of that. I might do that. That's just, it's too good. <laughs> ah! Love it. Love him. Legato is so fascinating. He is just this nihilistic. It's like if Vash was nihilistic. That's basically what it is. He's just like, the world is nigh. Let's just introduce some anarchy into this. Live life while you can, I guess, but you're all gonna die. So life is meaningless. It's just like, ah! And then... You know, Vash is like peace and love and life is worth living and everything is sunshine. And then Legato, you know, Blue Summers, Legato Blue Summers comes in and is like, no, nah, I don't believe that. <laughs> so, okay, so we need to put up here Legato Blue Summers. We need to go through this and talk about him. Uh, Vash knows him. So there's that. Uh, we'll put up here that Vash, Vash and him 
have a history. What's interesting about it, and then he finds Bash irritating. His existence is irritating. What's interesting about it is Vash seems to know him, like, fairly well. Vash seems to know him fairly well and is like, oh, what's he up to this time? What's he doing? But Legato doesn't seem to know Vash as well as Vash knows him. So that's interesting. I, I wonder if it's one of those things where you know people in life where you think you, you know them really well, but then you don't realize how well other people know you. Like, I've seen some people at work that are like, oh, hey, such and such, such and such. And I'm like... I don't really know you that well. So I'm like, ah! So I wonder if that's the case with Legato where he he knows of Vash, but Vash knows more about him than he knows about Vash. Or maybe since Legato is so nihilistic, he just doesn't care. That's probably the more apt reasoning, but oh my God, this episode, just the whole opening with him in it. Uh, so I like that we get Millie and them walking around uh, and they make Vash carry them. And Vash is like, why am I doing this for you, ladies? And they're like, well, you broke the car, so we have to go. How'd they break the car? We don't know. It's not told to us. It's something that happened off screen. I thought we were going to flash back and see how they got there with the whole thing in the car. But, you know, it, it's Vash. They were like a human humanoid typhoon. You ought to just know that it's there. So I'm going to put Vash up here. So we start out with Vash. And then he's wrecked, wrecked the car with Meryl and Millie. Now, on the one hand, I was a little bit sad that Vash told the girls to leave at the end of the episode. But then I was like, no, Legato can legit control you with his mind. You need to get away or he's going to kill you. And Vash is going to be really, really mad. So I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a little bit concerned that Legato is going to try to use his powers against Meryl and Millie. And that's going to get Vash. That's that's going to be Vash's like big weak point. And he's going to be like, oh, so you care about these girls. And then it's going to be just like one of those scenarios. I'm a little bit concerned. So I wasn't quite so, when Vash was like, you need to decide your job or your life, I was like, girls, maybe you ought to sit back and let Vash handle this or go find Wolfwood and make him get involved. I That would be the most rational thing. If Vash told you to leave, I'd be like, let's go find Wolfwood and then go back and find Vash and Wolfwood can talk some sense into him, right? Because Wolfwood can handle him. So yeah, he's like, you're not getting out of this. Are we there yet? Demons, I... So Gianna Rock, G Gianora Rock, would made me think of like January, but mm -mm. Gianora Rock just might be a, a town, a random town like the last city that we were in. Um, I do like this epic windmill. I love the design of the town. I love that the houses are built into the side as you like go up the staircase. It's really cool. And I like that unlike the plants, there's not really a plant here. Instead, it's like a big turbine built into the mountain, like a big windmill, which you see nowadays. So I think that's that's pretty cool. Like the windsock and everything, all of the machinery. Like it's a very cool design. And then we have Team Rocket show up. Uh, this gang, the, the Rockford Thieves or whatever. And they've like taken some girls away with them. They've stolen some girls from their home and made them come with them. And they're going to be like their sex slaves or something. Something gross. And then Lieutenant Surge is like the leader of them. And then we go inside where this squonkin' saxophone is. When the cat shows up in the first five minutes of an episode, you know it's going to be serious because they have to get that cat out of the way. And it's just tiny on the screen. It's barely even there. We're not even wasting any time with the cat. But you can't really see Legato when you walk into the bar with all of them there. They all have their... It was giving me like a mixture of Team Rocket with the black and the red line tracing and then like outsiders with like the greasers. It was giving me all of those vibes. Now, granted, there are some really bad shots of animation in this episode. There's some really good ones, but like I just paused the screen here when they walk into the bar. There are some wonky shots that are not quite on kilter, but it's fine because the content's just so good. The guy with the saxophone that's the bad guy, was it Milliewood or something? He's, his design's freaking amazing. I love him already. And he's a saxophone player. I'm like, give me this. Like him working alongside Legato and them sitting down. Yep, they're captives. And so bring us the best booze in the house. What I was trying to say in the reaction is the one guy with the mohawk, um, he's the first one to die. Uh, they'll say his name in a minute. But there was an old Nintendo basketball game that I used to play all the time. And one of the basketball players had like a green mohawk and it looked exactly like his character design. So I was having like a nostalgia trip. 
And then we go back and we see the girl is enamored by Legato at the bar. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about it is that was he there when we came in? Maybe. Who knows? Beats me. The funny thing about it is that it's a very direct parallel from when we first met Vash in the bar in episode one. Like, it's a parallel to that. And it's kind of a parallel to episode five, too. So, we meet in the bar just like Vash with his drink. And it looks like, like, cake. Drink and cake. It looks, I don't think it's a pancake. Don't think it's a waffle. I don't think he's eating straight up cheese. I think it's like milk bread or something like that. It's like a cake. And he has like a coffee and tea. Which is interesting because the first time we met Vash, he had like, he had whiskey, right? And here Legato's like, no, I'm completely, he's one of those villains that doesn't drink anything. He's like a sober villain. The creepiest kind of villain, right? And he's just sitting there and we only see the one eye. And her eyes get clear for a second, like when she's looking at him. And then they say he's like horribly, like dangerously handsome, and then that's when he shoots. If you just left Legato alone, I think he wouldn't have cared. But you shot his fork. He was in the middle of his milk bread. He was enjoying it. The end is nigh. He was enjoying the milk bread. And you, you shot it out. And he was like, okay. And he's just like, that was my food. And I like the saxophone music stops for a second. And when the saxophone music picked back up as they were killing each other, I was like, this saxophone player is like a cold-hearted bitch. But then you find out he's like a villain. You're like, okay, nope, that makes sense. He says, I intend to obliterate every trace of mankind eventually. So it's like, oh my God. So yeah, he is basically, his mission, his mission is to obliterate, obliterate mankind. Awesome. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. He looks a little bit like Seto Kaiba with the, with the coat and everything and the hair. But why rush the inevitable? Mm-hmm. And then he has some kind of freaky power where he uses his eye. So I'm wondering if the eye allows him, if the eye allows him to manipulate, manipulate telepathically. And maybe it doesn't work on Vash because they're the same type of whatever, but it works on humans. I don't know, but it's grisly. Like, he makes them... It looked like he made the guy, like, rip his own guts out. It looked like he made the guy bend his arm around and, like, take out his own heart and, like, rip it out. That's what it looked like. And then he just, like, went to the floor. It looked like he just made a guy rip his own guts out right in front. Nagi, right in front of everybody. Nagi. And then everybody just starts killing one another. And the saxophone guy's like, okay, I'll play. Like, I'm like, do I kind of ship Legato and Saxophone Man? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. He keeps Saxophone Man pretty close. I'm like, do I kind of ship Legato and Saxophone Man? Yes, I think so. He he is the Wolfwood to Vash's. He is the Wolfwood for Legato, basically. And then, yeah, the women there, they all just wipe each other out. And then he finishes his food and comes over and says, oh, you've been through a lot. And they're just like, yeah, we just saw some shit. And he's like, the end is near. Make good use of the time you have left. I'm just like, that's if somebody came up to me and telepathically made like a bunch of guys kill each other and then came up to me and was like, make use of the time you got left. I'm like, say no more, dude. Thanks for sparing us. It's just absolutely terrifying. And it's just the idea that he incites the polar opposite that Vash does. Like when Vash goes through town, you know, when Vash walks into town, it's this loud abrasive thing. But when he leaves town, it's like, peace and love. And it's like, everybody's so happy to see him go. And they're like, come back, Vash, whatever. And then in this case with Legato, he walks in so quietly, you don't even notice him. And then he leaves and everyone's terrified. So it's like the polar opposite reaction, right? Or at least opposite what we've gotten so far in this series. And he almost like, he looks down at his hand. And he says, that's unusual. He says, I don't normally waste my time on vermin. His voice actor is so smooth. His voice actor, I'm like, just sometimes voices get me. And I'm like, his voice is like butter. It's like silk. I'm like, oh my God. Yes, please. Say all of the words. Keep talking. <laughs> and he's like, why did I waste my time on them? And then he thinks of Vash and wonders. And he's like, oh, is it because you look the way you do? 
bash the stampede. Your very existence caused me a measure of irritation. Mm -hmm. Now his gloves are fingerless. So I don't know if they're the gloves from the uh, if they're the gloves from the OP. Now and then, of course, Bash and Meryl and Millie show up right after he leaves town. I love the shot of Meryl offering Bash the water canteen. It's so cute. Things are so happy-go-lucky. And then, yeah, the moment that Bash like walks into the saloon, the moment he says "afternoon." It's like, I love that double where he opens it up one way and then he just instantly, it like opens up again and he's serious. Like instantly changes. And he kicks the bottle and sees all the corpses. And then he's like, who did this? Who was it? And then at the top of the mountain is damn legato right there and then. And so, yeah, so of course, all of the gang show up to like back up their homeboys and Legato's like, did you not learn anything from, like, watching what happened? And the whole thing about killing only half of them so that half of them can go bury the others. And he says to know, he says, I want you, what does he say there? They talk about avenging. And then he manages, he's like, my hands are moving by themselves. And it's the whole time they're like, oh, and that creepy smile. Oh, my God. The creepy smile that Legato gives is terrifying. He's just, like, so creepy. And he just says, such fragile bonds. Because, yeah, he, they're basically talking about the bonds of humanity. And so he considers... Let's put them here. He considers the bonds of humanity useless. He's like, I don't see the point. He's like, I, I'm not... I don't believe in the power of the Nakama, basically. And so then... I like that he's looking around saying, you have a point. It isn't nice to hog. At first I was talking, I thought he was talking to the machinery. I was like, is he talking to the machinery? Is this again like when Vash was talking to the power plant? Is this what is happening then? But he's talking to the other assassins that are there. And they're like, who the hell are you talking to? And he's communicating. He's like, but only half. You get to kill half of them. I want you to kill half of the men. And then that's when, that's when the saxophone guy just like warps in and vanishes. Like what the hell? The saxophone guy, like there's people bursting out of the ground. There's a giant, there's a giant with a giant hand. There's looks what looks like could be a lizard person. There's Dominique that shows up. The glass breaks. And then it's just like there's spikes shooting off everywhere. It's absolutely insane. And then there's just like these assassins picking them off one by one. Like what the, the long shot guy. Yeah. What the hell? Like it gets gruesome and bloody real quick. Real quick. And then there's just Legato standing there. Like it's nothing. Yeah. And so then half the people are dead. like, why do you think I spared half of you? He says, my reason is a perfectly rational one. This way you can see to the bodies of your friends. If you're indeed closer than family, you can give them a proper burial. Which we know he was just making fun of them because they end up leaving the pile of corpses because he leaves it for Vash to find. Or he kills the rest of them. He says, this is not an act of mercy. I'm doing this to teach you the pain of living. So, whereas Vash is all about the joy and purpose of life. Legato is all about the pointless, pointlessness and pain of living. And then he makes the man, he either makes the man kill him or the man kills himself. And he's like, my point exactly. Like, so he's very nihilistic. Just doesn't even like, it seemed like the guy didn't want to shoot himself, but then he made him. And he's like, good work. So, so we have, then we have the name of all of these guys here. So we have Gray the Nine Lives, which is like nine lives like a cat. Gray the Nine Lives. Okay, we have that, who looks like this big juggernaut. Dominique the Cyclops. Okay. Dominique the Cyclops. Okay, with that has the demon eye. And then we have Zazie the Beast. Okay. Zazie the Beast. 
Okay. And then we have Le Leonoff the Puppet Master. Leonoff the Puppet Master. Okay. We got like a whole crew, right? And then we have uh, Hoppered the Gauntlet. Hoppered, Hoppered the Gauntlet. Okay. Who has this big like arm shooting out there. Ray, Ray, Ray die the blade or Ray day. Ray day the blade. Uh-huh. Okay. So we have them. Uh, EG mine. So I'm going to put him over here because this is slightly different. EG mine is a different one. Okay. A different name there. Uh, Kane the long shot. Kane the long shot. Okay. And with the huge ass gun that's really super long. And Mid Valley the horn freak. Oh my god. Mid Valley is my favorite so far. Just by design alone. Mid Valley the horn freak. Okay. And then we have all of them together. We are all here, sir. Chapel appears to be absent. So we have chapel missing. You know, just somebody that's the name of the church. Why not? Chapel. Is, would Wolfwood be chapel with the church? Could Wolfwood be a member of this group? Maybe. And he left the group because of whatever happened. And then he's Nicholas D. Wolfwood or Wolfwood the Chapel. I, what? Maybe I, that just seems, that seems like if Wolfwood's not among the group, maybe he knows Chapel. Because they say Chapel appears to be absent. And they're like, he's as sloppy as the rumors claim. So could Wolfwood be Chapel? I don't know. That would make sense if he was a priest. And he says, oh, well. He says, your target is very near. Do you have plans to send us all against the target? And he's like, no. He's like, I wouldn't be insulting us all to like say we're not strong enough that we have to send everybody against them. And he's like, Dominique would be the one that will go. And then, yeah, she shows up. She's like, I'm glad I'm all you need for the job, Mr. Legato. And then we have Legato, who's Legato Blue Summers. But he doesn't have like a the in his name that we know, right? Hairstyling for men. He's like, all the doors are closed. So, I mean, we have Vash the Stampede. So, like, most of these guys, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of these guys have a the in their name. And the only ones that don't are Chapel that's missing, the EG Mind guy, and Legato. So, what is the difference between the people that have the thes in their name and the ones that don't? What are the differences between them? Are they two different groups of people? Are Vash and the other guys weapons and they're just like of a different caliber than Legato? Are they all aliens? What is the deal? It seems like they're all connected somehow. And I could have swore he talked telepathically to Dominique, right? He thinks he knows it's Legato. And he thinks, he's like, was it Legato? And he said, what is he after this time? I like that Meryl like tries to get on to him being like, it's your fault for trying to push into a private property. Thank goodness he did. Otherwise, I don't think he would have, you know, fared against Dominique and all of this. He's like, he's in this town. I'm sure of it. But where? Yeah, where is it at? Hmm. So, yeah, I just, uh, what is it? What does he say here? I wanted to go back there with Legato real quick because he was saying something about humans he said you humans okay yes so legato is not human okay so then is vash human doesn't seem like it is what's the deal if legato's not human then what is vash what are these guys why do they have buzz in their names i there's so many questions but yeah he so legato is not human but what's the deal what what is how does this work and that's when he finds the idea 
that he needs to go after he needs to go after legato and he leaves millie and merrill behind and then shows up and sees the pile of corpses and that's when he sees dominique now dominique for being someone that was sent to kill him girl it is your own fault that you got bested because you could have killed him like three times and you chose not to I was like, although Vash does demonstrate that he was like on the defensive too, and he managed to like counter her at the same time. She's like, I am the second gung ho gun, Dominique the Cyclops. So she is the second seat, whatever that means. And they're the gung, gung ho guns. Was Vash a former member of the gung ho guns and he left because he has a the in his name? I, I'm wondering if Wolfwood is Chapel. I'm wondering if he is one of the members too. And he left the group to go like do his own soul searching. I'm wondering if that's the case. He seems like he'd fit into this crew. Interestingly enough. Does he know Legato? He seems like the fact that he was a gunsman. I don't know. But Vash's whole point in all of this is that we, we don't decide who lives and who dies he's like that is and i i love vash for saying that he's like the decision of who and who shouldn't should and shouldn't live is not ours to make he's like yeah those guys were douches and they probably deserve to be locked up or punished somehow but taking their life is going too far like we don't have the right to choose who lives and who dies and he's like by the way if i was so inclined during this little conversation I could have groped you five times. And then, yeah, like, does, does, undoes the buttons of her blouse. I'm like, oh, my God. There's, like, a little bit of sexism here at the very end where he's like, he's like, a lady's place is in the kitchen. And I'm like, oh, 90s anime. <laughs> I love Vash too much to get onto him too much for it. Mm -hmm. A little too much. I love Vash a little too much to let him get onto him for that a slight sexist remark. But yeah, so they end up fighting. And I'm very intrigued by the fact that he was like, how does, how does this work? How is she able to move? That's what he's trying to figure out. Do, I know she has the card of maneuverability. So there's this, t so this line is thrown out, right? We get the idea of this card. Card of maneuverability. So I like the idea we're in the Wild West playing cards. Like you have a hand of cards for poker. So she has a, a card. Do all of these guys have cards? Is that it? Are they all like a deck of cards where you have numbers one? She said she's a second gun. So she's like the two of something, like the two of spades or something. What is happening? The card of maneuverability. And then we find out what it is. And it's the fact that by using pain, he's able to like, see through whatever her deception is with the eye he's able to see through the eye and he shoots it open mm -hmm. the demon eye he says sensory paralysis induced by hypnotic effects that's the card that you have okay so it's like sensory paralysis she uses the demon eye the demon eye for sensory paralysis so they can't sense when she's right beside them it throws off their vision their smell their sight everything so yeah i'm interested about these cards and about the fact the demon eye should have affected all five senses so why and he's like i use the pain mm -hmm. she's like no mortal could do that and her eyes like the the demon eye is red and he's like well i'm not a mortal so i'm so fascinated i want to know about him I, when he says don't clean away people clean the house of the man you love like mine for example i was like oh my god which i guess she kind of walked into that because earlier she's like i'm just doing some spring cleaning and he's like clean the house of the man that you love and she's like i'm a lesbian and he's like oh well in that case <laughs> but yeah the idea of him getting onto her and then meryl and millie show up and meryl just like slugs him i love Meryl and Millie are like, Vash, how could you hurt this woman? And I'm like, do you see the mountain of corpses right beside them? Like, what, what are we doing? Like, when they show up, everything gets silly again. He's like, didn't you notice anything at all? And Millie's like, are you okay? And then she, I love that Vash is mad at them and she decides to run away. She says, this isn't over, Vash the Stampede. 
And then he's like, it would please me if you wore a dress next time. Like, he's smiling like, I got you beat. But I'm amazed that she left, but now she knows that those two women are with Vash. So if Legato finds out, then they are going to be um, targets. So that explains why Vash is like, no, 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 we cannot have you come with us. He's like, I thought I was dead. I can't believe he saw through the demon's eye. I was beaten by that feather brain of a man. And then we get Mid-Valley. And then he sees her. Okay. I, I'm amazed. I'm with Millie. I was like, I, an explanation would be nice. She's like, I want an explanation of what went on here. Yeah. And then that's when he hears the music with Legato. I'm like, when Legato's perched up on the plateau and he has Mid-Valley behind him playing the horn, the saxophone, I'm like, what a peak villain. A peak villain that shows up with a squonking sax playing behind him. I can get behind this. I'm like, oh my God. Ah! I just, I, I just, what are we supposed to do with this? It's too good. It's too good. And then he disappears. Yep. At this point, Vash is like, okay, it's time to decide. He's like, nope. He's like, your job or your life. He's like, this is as far as we can travel together. And she's like, why? He's like, it's going to get serious. I can't have, I'm afraid I can't do that. She's like, we have a job to do. And he's like, it's your job or your life. Like, are you going to keep your job or are you going to keep your life? Because if you travel with me because of your job, you are going to die. He's like, Legato will kill you and not think a second thing about it. And he's like, I can't have that happen. And Meryl tries to play it off as a joke. Like, oh, well, he's like, which is more important? She's like, oh, well, come on now. And he says, I won't say why. If I did, you'd be drawn into it. And so he's like, bye, it's been fun. He's like, nope. He's like, I'm not telling you my backstory because you don't need to know it. But I'm like, we want to know your backstory, please. Please tell us answers. And he says, but this is it. And she like, her and Millie go to follow him. And he says to stay back. I'm like, Vash, you should know by now that... They're not going to stay back. <laughs> no, they're going to go find Wolfwood. The question is going to be, is Wolfwood part of this entourage or not? And the thing about it is, if Wolfwood is part of the gung-ho gang as Chapel, could is Wolfwood doing it all as like a double agent thing and he could use it to infiltrate and save Vash in the long run? I'm curious about that. But then Vash questions, was this all a farce to get me riled up? I believe so. Yes. If so, I'll turn the tables. I I don't know though. It's like you've got you've literally got one, two, three, you've literally got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you got ten guys against you. And you barely beat this one woman. You just happen to notice something at the end. I'm like, uh He's like, Legato, it's my turn to hunt you, and I'll find you whatever it takes. I I don't think Legato is who he was originally searching for. But I feel like now he's like, Legato's been hunting me down. Now I've got to do the same for him. I'm like, I, I am so fascinated. I want to know all of the things. I want to know the backstory. I want to know who all these people are. I want to know like, like Zazie, the beast, the puppet master, the gauntlet, the blade, the long shot. These are all things that cause harm, right? The only thing that isn't is like nine lives. But, like, it says something about who they are. Like, obviously, this person can probably control people. This one has, like, the gauntlet, the blade, the long shot. They're all, like, have their own powers. The horn is its own thing. And then maybe he can, like, withstand, like, any attack. I I need to know things. And I need to know backstory. And I need to know about this group. I want to know more about Legato Blue Summers. Why is he nihilistic? Why does he want to stop and destroy humanity? What's the deal with all this? I We've still got, like... 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, we've got like 10 episodes to go. we got plenty of time. Plenty of time for answers. And I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm very curious to know your thoughts down below. I This episode was so much fun. I have so many questions. I want to know all the answers. And I just have to be patient. But I don't know how patient I'm going to be. <laughs> so. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I'll be back very soon with more Trigun. Bye! <laughs>